In today's show, we are giving away a free manual on all kinds of insurance, what you absolutely need, why you really need it, and how to quickly get it cheaply, depending on your situation. Understanding insurance can be tricky, so you must have a clear knowledge of what you need, as well as the corresponding coverage. This can make a major difference in the price you ultimately pay. When you have something to lose, and you know that you could not afford to cover a potential loss yourself, insurance will step in, giving you the necessary means to protect your investment, lifestyle, assets, and personal property. You pay a small amount of money every month in exchange for the assurance that if something goes wrong, your insurer will have your back in the form of monetary compensation. Let's get into the nitty-gritty right now. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic because I am doing marvelous. Now, if you are doing marvelous, <laughs> go grab a cup of coffee or tea <laughs> or vodka. And let's roll. Now, today we want to talk about a very interesting, a very relevant topic, you know, which is part of uh, risk management for individuals as well as companies, and that's insurance. And I'm going to give you the complete insurance tutorial you need to cover anything in your life and your career as also in your business. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty here, I want to give a shout out to our millions of uh, fans and listeners and uh, viewers in the United States, Canada, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, and the rest of the world. Particularly, I want to give a shout out to Jensen Adams and Brooke Hurst, Wyoming. Libby Adams in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and Leo Poole in Laramie, Wyoming. Thank you so much, Jensen, Libby, and Leo. We love you. We uh, we appreciate the support, and we love your families all the way to Wyoming. Now, let's start for, first with health insurance, right? Now, when it comes to health insurance, everybody knows w what it is. We don't need any definition here, but it is very important to remember a few things. The specific coverage you need when you buy health insurance depends on the policy or that you want as well as the your financial situations now there are several options here you have something like low deductible health plans right this kind of plans keep your out-of-pocket costs really 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 low in other words you will pay higher premiums for these plans since they provide more coverage right your costs are more predictable because you'll know what your premiums are up front and you never have to worry about paying thousands of dollars god forbid something happens to you and you end up needing medical services so that's for the low deductible health plans and then you have the high deductible health plans now those are called hdhps so the high deductible health plans now the thing is you know they have they work in the opposite way. So they have low premiums. In other words, you are going to pay less upfront each month just to be covered. Now, there is a trade-off, of course, right? So the trade-off here is that you are responsible for covering things like routine basic care because the trick is your deductible, like the amount you have to pay with, you know, you have to pay yourself before the insurance company kicks in to pay the rest that amount is typically several thousand dollars right so with with many high deductible health plans you can open something called a health savings account hsa right and you can contribute pre-tax funds to it so that this can be used to cover your medical cost as you incur them now this is very important folks if you are currently working for you know for any company please check with the hr department because the last thing you want is to have a, a medical emer uh, emergency and your your life is just completely tur uh, torn up, turned upside down because of the cost of the uh, the medical cost right so please open an hsa right now so you can contribute pre-tax funds very important pre-tax so that means you have a, you have access to a lot more money so we have low deductible health plans we have high deductible health plans. We also have something called catastrophic health plans. Now, this is our this is 
hands down the cheapest in terms of in terms of premium right but the problem is they have a big there's a big caveat here the catch here is that they provide virtually no coverage for care unless you incur many thousands of dollars in medical cost now and on top of that the deductible is even higher than that of a, a typical high deductible plan so this is the kind of stuff that i'm trying to explain to you the different types of uh, health insurance you have there so that you can make the right decision right and i'm also telling you what they cover now you also have something called you know hmos right this is something that was uh, in the news it has been the news the last 10 years when we were having a discussion about Ob obamacare and all other kind of uh, all other kinds of uh, discussions around healthcare. so hmo hmo stands for health maintenance organization now if you are with an hmo network you are restricted to receiving care from a specific network of participating doctors right so these doctors are called you know they are referred to as being in network and the thing is that they have to agree they must agree to accept the rates for care that your insurance company has set so the thing here is that you, you need to have a referral from a primary care physician to see a specialist right so now the thing is that HMOs typically define specialists to include anyone other than your primary care physician right so professionals such as psychologists psychiatrists chiropractors dermatologists obstetricians and the list goes on are considered by your your HMO specialist now you also have preferred provider organizations those are the PPOs now the thing is that unlike the HMO when you enroll in a PPO you don't have to get a referral just to see a specialist right and, and the thing is that although care will be cheaper if you pick a doctor who is a network you'll have more we have a, a, a more comprehensive if you will coverage for out-of-network care than in an HMO now you also have something called EPOs so those are this is a you know again um, this is a, this means exclusive provider organizations now the thing is that EPOs don't even require you to to get a referral to see a specialist but the thing is that they will pay nothing for out-of-network care except in emer emergencies so if you want to choose a specialist that is not within the network within the EPO network make sure you have enough cash on hand to pay for that specialist yourself because the the EPO the network is not going to cover you for that now you also have something called point of service plan now a point of service plan pays for in network and out of network care however you will pay more if you see a, a doctor out of network so uh, the, and the thing also is that a primary care doctor will need to make referrals to specialists when necessary so this is folks i'm just trying to give you different types of uh, health insurance out there now when it comes to health insurance of course you want to understand what it covers now health insurance covers everything covers all kinds of conditions of course there are restrictions but they cover everything so everything you know every every disease every condition every part you know anything that relates to your physiology a health insurer will cover it now the thing is that you know like i said earlier it is very important to know what you want you have to have an idea of what the kind of coverage you need right is it just general general care is it a specific condition that you have because there are some restrictions some insurers insurance companies even though the law you know bans it they will have preconditions or they will have they will just have a, a period the waiting period will be longer so if you sign up today you probably have to wait for six months or nine months before before coverage is in force so what they do is that you know they try of course and this is understandable right the insurance company is trying to minimize their risk while covering you if they deem you to be a higher risk so what you have to do here is you first have to understand what your coverage is and you have to look for what what type of insurer insurer will take the kind of risk you have 
at an affordable rate, right? This is why I was sort of giving you, you know, some idea about an idea about low deductible health plans, high deductible health plans, catastrophic health plans, HMOs, PPOs, and EPOs. Now, to get health insurance cheaply, you need to, to say, you know, you need to do this. As I said before, the first thing you want to do is match your policy to your care needs. So you want to shop around. You want to ask for referrals. You want to maintain a healthy lifestyle. And most important, and this is very important, most important, consider getting health insurance from your current provider, from your current insurer. If you already have any type of insurance, be it life insurance, homeowner's insurance, uh, pet insurance, whatever it is, talk to that provider first because a lot of insurance companies, if not all of them, will give you some type of discount to, you know, to sort of consolidate your coverage with them. All right. So this is this is it for health insurance. I will um, get back to you. I will get right back right after this. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. We are still here. We have covered uh, health insurance in the first uh, in the first section. This is a Sweetie Kiwi show, the, the world's biggest infotainment program. We are talking today about insurance, all kinds of insurance. And this show is the easy peasy tutorial on insurance. You know, all kinds of info that you need to make the right decision when choosing any type of insurance. Now, we've covered health insurance, as I said before. Let's move on now into dental insurance. Now, dental insurance, as, as the name implies, you know, this covers anything around you know or your teeth and anything you know mouth hygiene sort of help you uh, improve when you have a problem with your mouth hygiene the uh, the insurance will kick in and cover the cost now you can you can get dental insurance through you know your company you know so if you're currently employed you know you can get that you can get the, the insurance through your uh, the companies and that is if the company offers it as a, refer, as a as a benefit, right? Now, if that is not the case, then you would have to independently buy dental insurance from providers. Now, the thing here is that right now, there are no subsidies to help you afford dental insurance premiums and they can actually, you know, go very, very high. If you, you just need to shop around. You need to shop around for a policy that provides appropriate coverage, right? Now, there are a lot of options. There are a lot of options when it comes to dental insurance. The first thing is there are something called, there is something called discount plans. Now, with a dental discount plan, you know, your plan doesn't pay for a portion of your care. Rather, you get discounted services by seeing a dentist within a participating network, right? So what it is is that you pay, you know, every month or every year, you pay a smaller cost to be covered under a discount plan than for other types of dental insurance, you know. But the the, the catch here is that, unfortunately, you will all, you will typically pay more out of pocket, right? So that's a dental discount plan. Now again, should you choose a dental discount plan or a regular, you know, regular dental insurance? It's up to you. It it's based on your financial situation. It's based on your, your 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 coverage needs. It's based on your family history when it comes to health health insurance or dental hygiene. It, it's based on your diet and a lot of other you know other other things. Now you have HMO. Now I already just explained what HMO is. So the HMO also apply. The HMO scheme applies also to the the dental insurance uh, arena. So. You know, you you have to pick a dentist who will be your primary care provider, and there is no coverage for out-of-network dentists. So, if you, you know, if you choose any uh, any dentist who is out of network, you are on your own. You have to cover the financial, the fa uh, you have to cover the cost yourself. The the third category here is you have dental P PPO, which are usually called DPPO, right? So. Basically, it works the same way as, in, in, and again, PPO stands for Preferred Provider Organization. So, it, dental PPO means dental preferred provider organization. You can visit in or out of network dentist, but generally, 
in network then it will be cheaper right so all these organizations whether it is HMO PPO or EPO they are trying to make sure that you choose somebody who is you choose a specialist who is in network right now the uh, you also have something called fee for service that's really a framework that has that, that has risen recently as the dental industry the dental care industry is trying is you know going through some form of a transition and revolution you have the entry of new players and the exit of older players so now you have fee for service now, now like a dental ppo you can visit any dentist and your insurance will pay a percentage say 70 percent or 80 percent give or take of coverage now however remember that fee-for-service dentists typically aren't reimbursed as much from the insurance as dentists participate in the ppo plan so the thing here is the results the result here is that you may have to you know fork over more out of, out of more money for out-of-pocket cost okay so this is really what it is now the uh, the, the thing is that you really need dental dental insurance you do because chances are even though you have even if you have a, a clean cut uh, diet even 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 if you have a clean cut mouth hygiene even if you are genetically blessed chances are and this is just the normal normal evolution of all metabolic processes and all biological processes and your teeth are no are not excluded from that you will your teeth will have to at some point have some kind of decay some kind of a degradation so you need to have proper mouth hygiene so dental hygiene dental insurance is as important as health insurance right normally i don't even understand why you know they are separating health insurance from dental insurance because for me dental hygiene is part of health so you know all those things should be categorized under um, under health insurance but i think this is a, a debate for another day i think what's happening here is that the the insurance industry is trying to diversify and you know have several streams of uh, <laughs> of revenue here okay how do you get dental insurance cheaply now you can get again you can get as I said earlier, you can get dental insurance through your company, right? Uh, and if that's not possible, ask for referrals, right? And uh, if you have, if you already have any kind of insurance, you want to talk to your current insur your, your insur your current um, your current insurance provider to see if they offer, you know, dental insurance because it's always cheap. It's always cheaper to consolidate coverage with the same provider right one thing you also have to do is you have to maintain proper mouth hygiene this is this is key folks you know it's very important you have to maintain proper mouth hygiene you have to limit things like sugar salt right you have to stop smoking now this show is not about health advice but as we are talking about a type of health insurance you have to limit sugar and salt. You have to quit smoking. You have to limit drinking, right? Those are common sense. I would say grandma advice for, you know, maintaining proper, proper health, right? I will be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back, folks, to another section of today's show. I'm just doing fantastic. I'm very happy to, to talk to you. I'm very happy to have this conversation to you today about insurance. And um, we've, we have talked about already, we've talked about health insurance and dental insurance. Now we, now we are going to talk about disability insurance, another very interesting and very relevant topic in today's world where, again, insurance is a way to balance to manage and mitigate risk right now before i talk to i talk about disability insurance i want to give a shout out to ricky atkins in Gotham, wisconsin helena carney in whitefish bay and that's in wisconsin and connor key connor key and wanaki that's also in wisconsin now we want to give a shout out to our millions of viewers in latin america in the united states in in africa in uh, asia and also in Europe, all over the world. We love you. Thanks for the support. We really appreciate it. If you just 
or if you just join us please consider subscribing to our channel if you like the content we like to push this sort of content proper content family friendly very relevant content for everyday needs we like to push this, this kind of content every single day once or twice or three times depending on our, <laughs> on our inspiration or resources so and turn on the, the the notification bell so you are aware of you know any new release please consider sharing this 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 show this content is very important like it and comment right share your experience about insurance as a general topic and you can pick any particular any particular field you want to talk about also please this is very important folks please consider watching our ads the ads served in this show because this is an ad supported show we need the resources to expand our, pro our production team to hire more talent to do more more productions to prepare to to uh, finance the chip the trips to finance investigations and reports all these things take a lot of resources so thank you for your support now disability insurance what is it now disability insurance very basically it is coverage that is intended to replace your income if something happens that makes you unable uh, unable to work right accidents disease you're hospitalized this kind of stuff right life happens right so there are both long-term and short-term disability policies right and the thing is that short-term disability coverage generally replace a larger portion of your income now it is very important to read the fine prints of your policy before even buy them or when you get a quote from insurance from, from an insurance representative make sure that you read the fine prints because disability policies have a specific specific definition of what it means to be disabled and you have to understand that they, they only pay the insurance company will only pay a percentage of the salary you are earning prior to becoming disabled now that percentage it varies right it goes from 50 50 percent to 75 percent of your base salary for a short-term disability policy and between anywhere from 40 to 75 of base salary for a long-term policy so policies generally also sometimes they set a maximum cap on how much you can receive so you know this is very important because imagine you know you are you're making one million dollars a year or something happens you know the the insurance companies wants to set a cap because they want to cover uh, themselves too so now disability insurance where can you get it you can get it through your provider through uh, through your your employer right or you can just go on the open market and buy a policy yourself so you can do some research online talk to people around you as for referrals that kind of stuff and buy a policy yourself now the thing is that these policies are very costly which is why a lot of people just forego this kind of coverage right because the thing is that your premiums are generally equal to a percentage of, of income right but sometimes the the insurance the insurance company also factors in other criteria such as your health is your health history your professional background your gender this kind of stuff and you also have the wedding period right will also affect premium costs now the, the wedding period as i said before is the time you have to be without income due to disability right so the longer the time period before disability insurance kicks in the lower the premium will be so if you choose for instance okay you know let's say something happens to me and uh, I, I am disabled you know I can't work anymore and I and I'm comfortable waiting for two years before disability insurance kicks in versus waiting for one year the two-year period under the two-year uh, period um, uh, plan you will pay lower premiums than the, the one year right because the insurance co the insurance companies again is saying listen the longer you wait the less you have to pay in terms of premium so make sure when you shop for a disability policy look for coverage that has a broad definition of what it means to be disabled that's number one and number two look for coverage that replaces a big enough portion of income with a short waiting period if any so you know this is this is the the basic rule of thumb whenever you're shopping for disability policy 
you know, you have three things you have to pay attention to, and I'm going to repeat them again. So you want a coverage, you want coverage that has a very broad and very generous definition of what it means to be disabled. One, you want coverage that replaces a big enough portion of income. So a higher percentage of your current income. And specialists usually advise people to choose to go for 75%. 75% that's a big nice sort of rounded number or even 70% but if you can get 75% three quarters of your existing salary you're fine because and this is because you know everybody depend you know most people have something called disposable income in other words when they get their salary they can spend money on a lot of stuff and they still have money left over and that 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 savings it's usually around 75% or 30% depending on the person's situation. So if you can get something that is 75% disability income, it allows you it allows you really to live as if nothing happened, right? So you can still live a normal life. So that's, uh, and the third thing you have to pay attention to is look for coverage that has a short waiting period, if any. The, if, you know, those, those coverage that, those insurance companies that offers you no waiting period or even better so go go for those so me do just understand that going without disability insurance can put you in a very difficult situation folks because life happens things happen in life right and 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 stuff happens and the thing is that while you can apply for social security disability benefits these benefits are usually available for long-term disabilities only that's very important and the thing is that you know the government um, unfortunately makes it very difficult for folks to qualify for this kind of benefits so if you can't qualify for social security benefits and you haven't purchased disability insurance you in essence have no income at all if you can't work right this is why again of course you know we've said this before in, in other shows but you need to have two types of savings account you need to have one current savings account and you need to have um, a rainy day account an emergency fund right to sort of cover that check out our other our, our other shows on financial planning and personal finance you can get a lot of info about that right now how can you get disability insurance cheaply again it's you know we already talked about things like the percentage of coverage you want the percentage of of disability income you want that can affect your uh, your premium also try to talk to a an insurance company that is currently that you currently are doing business with right so if you have another policy with them it's just better to talk to them so you know they can really uh, you know see how they can help you out all right i will see you right after this don't go anywhere Welcome back, folks, to uh, the, the Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are talking today about insurance, and this is very interesting. This is an important topic when it comes to risk management. And uh, I've already talked to you about disability insurance, dental insurance, and health insurance. Now, we are going to talk about life insurance, another critical topic. But before that, you know, uh, just let me just sort of, uh, you know, frame the, today's conversation. So you, but for those who just join us, they can really understand what we're talking about. Now, in today's show, I'm giving you a free manual on all kinds of insurance. I'm telling you what you absolutely need, why you really need it, and how to quickly get it cheaply, depending on your situation. Understanding insurance can be very tricky, so you must have a clear knowledge of what you need, as well as the corresponding coverage. This can make a major difference in the price you ultimately pay. When you have something to lose, and you know that you could not afford to cover a potential loss yourself, insurance will step in, giving you the necessary means to protect your investment, lifestyle, assets, and personal property. You pay a small amount of money every month in exchange for the assurance that if something goes wrong, your insurer will have your back in the form of monetary compensation, right? So let's get into the nitty gritty with number four, which is life insurance. So life insurance again, life insurance pays out money called a death benefits to a designated beneficiary when you die. So what you do is you can choose, you can name people, companies, or trusts 
as beneficiaries and you can have more than one beneficiary who will split your death benefits in accordance with your instructions. Now, so this is very important because people always think when you have a life insurance, the money has to go to a person. No, the money can go to a, a person or several people. It can go to a company or several companies. It can go to a trust or several trusts. So the beneficiary, the definition of beneficiary here is very, very large, right? Now, why do you need, why do you need it? So to just to kind of explain, life insurance pays that money to someone after you die. So you yourself, you as the policyholder, you do not benefit from it. All right. So it, why, why would you need it? Now, if anyone relies on your income, you need life, you need life insurance. This is very important because if anyone depends on you for services such as your family, if you are a stay-at-home spouse or if you have aging relatives, you know, if you're a caregiver, you need life insurance because, and, and, and for instance, also in the business realm, if you have a business partner who will need to buy out your share of the business, if you pass away, you need life insurance. In addition to that, I'm not even talking about today about the you know, funeral cost. It's just crazy. I mean, you know, on average, funeral cost, uh, funeral costs range between eight grand, eight grand to twelve grand. So you need that life insurance, even if you want to be buried without sending your family into debt, right? Because that, that's really the bottom line here. The bottom line here is that don't put your 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 your, your, your family and your company into debt or into dire financial financial situation after you pass away right so this is really the reason why you need life insurance now uh, you have several types of life insurance we're not going to go too deep too much you know like in too much detail today because we have another show that will really break life insurance down and explain to you in childish detail what really what it really is but today just re just remember that you have something called term life insurance now term life term life insurance you know can be set for a set period of, period of time such as 20 or 30 years that's why that's why the the the, the count that's where the word term is so there is a specific term for it right now if you die while the policy covers you the death benefits pays out to whomever you designated as a beneficiary so if you don't die within the term the, spe the specified term no benefits are paid right so the, all the money goes to the insurance company now nobody wants to die anyway right so you can't say oh well you know i'm getting the time life, uh, term life insurance and you know i wish i could die so people can just get my cash that would be crazy right <laughs> <laughs> so so the thing here is that the idea behind life, uh, term life insurance is that you have a policy when you need it when your kids are young or when or your spouse needs your income right so by the time the term expires your kids you know your children or you know your children should be grown and you should have savings in the bank so your spouse no longer relies on your paycheck so it is some kind of risk mitigation strategy for the short term right so if you are in your 20s or 30s you get term life insurance your kids are, are young you cover them something happens to you they're comfortable right and your wife is comfortable so this is the, the idea behind term life insurance now let's talk about whole life insurance which is another type of life insurance now whole life insurance covers you all your life this is why it's called whole life as, a, as opposed to term life right so when you die the benefits are paid to the beneficiary now the thing here is that of course because whole life insurance covers you all your life it is more expensive than term life insurance right and and the thing is of course not just because it can remain in effect for your entire life as long as you pay the premiums right now the other reason why whole life insurance is more expensive is because they have a cash value now i'll talk about that right now i'll talk about that a little bit later but premiums that you pay for whole life coverage are more than what it costs to just insure you because some of the money is invested right so that's what i was talking about earlier when i said cash value so the whole life policies acquire cash value and you can borrow against this cash value 
by filling out a, a simple form or access you know or access by selling your policy to investors you know so there is a service that, that there are companies that provide that kind of service what they do is they use the the they facilitates things called life settlements so this is very important you can use whole life insurance as an investment vehicle now there is something you need to really be very clear about is that a whole life policy it's usually set to mature at death or the maturity age of 100 whichever comes first now this is just you know the number 100 is a way for the insurance industry to kind of cover their own backs right because you don't want to start having people just living forever here right so this is very important to be more exact the maturity day will be the policy anniversary nearest age 100 now the policy becomes a maturity endow endowment that's the that's in insurance parlance maturity endowments when the when the insured person lives past the stated maturity age right so if the person you know gets over 100 then the policy becomes a maturity endowment now in that event what happens is that the policy owner receives the face amount in cash so if you live if you have if you have whole life insurance and you are lucky enough to live past 100 years you will receive your own cash while you are still alive you are receiving the face amount in cash now face amount means what face amount means what you paid plus whatever uh, capital gains were made on the investments minus the potential uh, all the all the loans that you have taken against the policy and have have not repaid right so this is very important you have to also understand that recently there are some insurance companies that have started, uh, you know, increasing the uh, the maturity the ma maturity anniversary. So instead of 100, now they're going to 120 because they have realized that hey, listen, yeah, people are living longer. You know, technology is advancing, medical medical research is uh, just uh, you know uh, it's just uh, being very very active. And people are living longer, so they push the maturity date to 120. So, increased maturity ages have the advantage of preserving the tax-free nature of the death benefits, right? In contrast, this is what I didn't say before, but I want I need to say now. If you are living past 100 and you get your, your full amount in cash, there are serious tax obligations. There are substantial tax obligations. So, if you ever get that money, don't think it all is yours, right? So, this is very important now. One thing that you want to think about is that whole life insurance can be good, you know, whole life versus, you know, rather than term life insurance, whole life insurance can be very attractive for things like supplemental retirement income, right? Surviving spouse income, estate planning, and funeral expenses. Now, how do, how do you get it cheaply? Again, the you have to know what you want. You have to think about your personal situation, your family situation why you want to be covered and most importantly talk to an insurer with whom you already do business you already are engaged in some kind of business in terms of coverage right whether it is car insurance or pet insurance or health health care insurance the list goes on all right i will talk to you right after this don't go anywhere don't go anywhere don't go anywhere Welcome back, folks, to uh, the Sweaty Kiwi Show, the world's largest infotainment show. I'm very happy to welcome you back to the show. We are talking about insurance today. We have talked before about life insurance. We talked about disability insurance. We have talked about dental insurance. And now we are talking about, we also talked about health insurance, I should add. And now we have to talk about flawed insurance, another critical, another critical type of insurance that um, that really affects more than 2 million Americans and this is a substantial uh, uh, subject to talk about and this is a substantial also type of insurance now before I, I talk about this if you just join us and you are or you just join us uh, you've been listening to this show for the last 20-30 minutes please and you, and you love the content please like our like this content consider subscribing to our 
our, our channel we we love having new subscribers and turn on the, the notification bell so that you are notified whenever we drop a new show and we do so every single day rain or shine share this content right now if you believe that someone somewhere might need to hear the kind of information we are dropping here and also importantly comment below give us your uh, your opinion tell us what you believe you know what is your experience with insurance share the intellectual wealth with the rest of the sweaty kiwi community we want to learn we want to move forward we want to move forward as a community we want people to stop making stupid mistakes when it comes to insurance we want people to be empowered to have the right knowledge so let's get things done today all right <laughs> okay now a quick a quick shout out to cody henson a dedicated fan a diehard fan of sweet Kiwi show in concord west virginia amelia horton in charleston west virginia and colton bass in morgantown west virginia so cody henson amelia horton colton bass we love you and your family all the way there in west virginia let's talk now about flood insurance now flood insurance is a is a, is a particular one now homeowners insurance covers most sources of loss to your home but policies typically exclude floods so if you have homeowners insurance don't think you are covered for flood for flood no you're not covered policies insurers don't want to go there because it's just a very complicated subject for them and a very costly one at that so flooding what is flooding really now the national flood insurance program defines flooding as a general and temporary condition of partial or complete inundation of two or more acres of normally dry land area or two or more properties at least one of which is your property from the following overflow of inland waters unusual and rapid accumulation of or runoff of surface waters from any surface and mud flows i'm going to repeat that because it's very important that you know you see a lot of uh, um, a lot of uh, weather events and producing a lot of issues in the United States, you know, whether it is in the in the Southwest, you know, we've seen things with hurricanes and people are always baffled as what flooding insurance really is. So I'm going to say it again. So the National Flood Insurance Program defines flooding as a general and temporary condition of partial or complete inundation of two or more acres of normally dry land area or two or more properties, at least one of which is your property. From three things, mud flows, number one. Number two, overflow of inland waters. All right, that's number two. Number three, unusual and rapid accumulation or runoff of, of surface waters from any source. Now, this, this sort of, uh, Detrimental events can be brought on by landslides, right? I said before, hurricanes, you have earthquakes, or other natural disasters that influence flooding, right? But while the home, but while a homeowner may, for instance, have you know earthquake coverage, that coverage may not always cover things like flood as a result of uh, earthquakes. All right, so it is very important to understand that in the United States very few very very few i think uh, you have a maximum of about seven or eight give or take very few insurers in the u.s provide private market flood insurance coverage due to the hazard of flood typically being confined to a few areas right because why is it not inter interesting for an insurer basically flood is not a big enough risk right it is confined to a few areas so they're not making money by just insuring a few a few individuals right i mean the cost versus the rewards the risk versus the rewards it's just too it's just too uh, much in their in their disfavor right so it, just think about it right you cover a few people and they're paying you maybe uh, 50 bucks a month but, but when there is a problem when there's a flood they have to fork over the insurance companies that i'm talking about here they have to fork over hundreds of thousands of dollars while well, they have been collecting only uh, 
five thousand bucks right so the the ratio of risk rewards here is not really good so they, they don't do it they really just don't do it so you know the flood insurance is therefore an unacceptable risk due to the inability as i said before the inability for the insurer to spread the risk to a wide enough population in order to absorb the potential catastrophic nature of the head of the of the hazard right so congress has done something very great about this so congress what congress did was congress created in 1968 you know something called the national flood insurance program so you know this is something that you know if you need flood insurance you likely get it from the national flood insurance program what and what they do is they provide subsidized flood insurance so you need to find an fip participating agent to get covered right it's the same thing as you know if we were to talk about business you have a, an agency called the small business administration and you have things something called sba loans where an agency of the federal government steps in to subsidize the loan process it, it is the same thing here so you don't get the you don't get insurance directly from the national flood insurance program because it is a program but what they do is they subsidize it so you need to find a local provider and then make sure make, make sure that that local provider works is affiliated or has some kind of a participation contract with the national flood insurance program and get the insurance the flood insurance through that local provider right so in some but not all states you could get you could also get a coverage from a private insurer right so the option to buy private flood insurance policies has has not been around uh very long it has been around uh, about you know in the last 10 years and and therefore it may not be available where you live right there are also risks with private policies that can be avoided by using the nfip program including the possibility that your policy won't be renewed and you'll be left without coverage when you need it right so i would say in general it's just a lot a lot better to go through the nfip you know right that that way the government will never drop you in a very significant moment so as opposed to a private insurer right so this is very important so now if you live in a flood zone as determined by fema flood maps your lender will require you to buy flood insurance if you have a mortgage right so renters renters should also purchase flood insurance to protect their possessions in case of a flood this is something that is that's very important to know now now this is another biggie folks you know even if you don't live in the flood zone if you happen to be concerned about flooding or think your property might be declared a flood zone at some time in the future i would recommend that you buy flood insurance today because Otherwise, you'll have no coverage for your property or possessions if your home floods. All right. Now, how do you get flood insurance cheaply? Now, again, as I said earlier, the only option, the only viable option in my, you know, if, according to our research, is to go through the NFIP. Now, how do you get a cheaper one? Of course, you have things like uh, deductible. You have the situation of your um, of your uh, property. You have things you have done to structurally, to structurally um, solidify the foundation of the house. So insurance companies uh, will give you a break financially. That is, in terms of premium, if you have you have, you have you have shown them that not only your property is in a in a low risk area, but also you've done certain things in the house to make sure that if there is a problem, if there is a flood, you know. The, pro the probability of you of your house being uh, you know uh, you know being affected is low right if you have more info you can talk to an architect because architects have the the, the ability to to help you find the, the, the you know a very strong structural foundation so that in of course i mean the foundation will not be resilient in the face of landslide right but the thing is that sometimes you have a uh, low level floods and if you have the right structural foundation your property could be protected all right i will be right back right after this 
Welcome back, folks, to uh, the Sweaty Kiwi Show, the world's biggest entertainment show. We are talking today about, <laughs> you know, insurance. I mean, this is a very interesting and great, great topic that I love talking about. And I want to talk to you about, you know, I've already talked to you about health insurance, dental insurance, disability insurance, life insurance, flood insurance, right? But for those who just join us, let me just give you a framework of what we are talking about today so into the, in today's show i'm giving you a free manual on all kinds of insurance and i mean i'm just breaking down for you what you absolutely need why you really need it and how to quickly get it cheaply depending on your situation now understanding insurance can be tricky right so you must have a clear knowledge of what you need as well as the, comp the corresponding coverage this can make a major difference in the price you ultimately pay. When you have something to lose and you know that you cannot afford to cover a potential loss yourself, insurance will step in, giving you the necessary means to protect your investment, lifestyle, assets, and personal property. You only pay a small amount of money every month in exchange for the assurance that if something goes wrong, your insurer will have your back in the form of monetary compensation. So let's get into the nitty gritty and talk about the next type of insurance you need to be, you know, you need to be familiar with. That is pet insurance. Now, before we even talk about pet insurance, let me just say that we have, we have an entire show, an entire show on pet insurance. And I strongly recommend you to check that show, to listen to it, to watch it, because this show has been one of the most popular shows of ours of the uh, most popular sweaty kiwi shows and um, a lot of you know millions of people loved it and i would i would strongly encourage you to to check out to check it out it has plenty of info tips tricks tactics on pet insurance you know in addition to how to make your how to make your little puppy and cutie pie just you know happy all the time and healthy so for today's for in today's show i will you know briefly talk about pet insurance what it is and give you some kind of uh, tips on what you should do what you should look for now pet insurance if you have pets if you have pets you should have insurance for them right because animals can encounter expensive health issues right and there are many advanced treatments available for serious ailments in pets in fact it is proven that animals can have you know i mean not even proven it happens today it's, it's like routine chemo you know animals can have chemo for cancer so chemotherapy for cancer heart surgery for heart disease hip re hip replacement and many 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 other treatments available in human medicine so this is what i was talking to, i was talking to you earlier that medicine has advanced has you know advanced so much in the last 30 years that whatever is available for is available to humans is also available to animals I mean, at least to pets right so the policy the pet insurance policy will be more affordable if you buy it while your pet is still young very critical because the thing is that some insurance companies have a cap right on, on the age of the of the pet of the, the the age is around 14 or 15 years for for um for dogs and around 16 years for for cats so pet insurance policies also vary in what they cover so you can get an accident only policy and that allows you to pay out to pay out in case you know your pet gets hit by a car or hurt in another type of accident right so that's for accident only policy you also have an accident and illness policy and this coverage helps you in case your um, your pet develops a serious illness or is hurt in, in an accident right so you have the protection of accident and illness now you can also get if you're you, you have the budget or you um, you love your cutie pie so much that you you are willing to go broke and uh, <laughs> and, and treat him or heal her you know you can get a comprehensive policy that covers three things routine care as well as accidents and illness all right so the, the uh, most in, most pet insurance policies have you know they they, they exclude rather 
pre-existing conditions and some even exclude genetic disorders or specific breeds known to have health problems i mean for instance french bulldogs those are very very prone to diseases so some insurers will just exclude them outright so what you want to do here is that you want to shop carefully thoroughly to see you know what each policy covers what they offer and you know similar to um, human health insurance you know a policy with the uh, with uh, a higher deductible will cost less right in premiums but they but that will require you to pay out more when your pet needs care right so it's a uh, and 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 inversely if you have a policy with a lower deductible that will cost you more in premiums right but will will require you to pay out less when your pet needs care so it's a balance that you have to strike between your personal needs your financial situation uh the situation of your pet his age you know his breed and uh, his health history right so you want to also check uh, consumer sites or you want to check the better business bureau before choosing a pet insurance carrier because the thing is that you have a lot of bad guys out there a lot of bad players in the market you know some insurers will make lots of promises up front and in the end they'll just deny your claims or they won't provide the promised coverage so just make sure the insurer that you are going to choose has a clean reputation now how do you know uh, how do you get pet insurance very cheaply now make sure that you know you get as i said before make sure you get the coverage while the pet is still young and choose coverage wisely right choose between accident only illness routine care comprehensive all, all of the above right pick a good breed i know this is a very uh, difficult one because some people are very some people like only a certain breed a certain type of breed but you want to pick a good breed unless you can afford the uh, the uh you know the the inherent the idiosyncratic problems that come with each breed right the the one of the things you also want to think about is choose buy pet insurance coverage buy pet insurance sorry buy pet insurance from an insurance company you already doing business with right so the 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 idea of buying several things with the same same company you know several several policies with the same company it's just a good one it allows you to save money it allows you to consolidate your expenses and deal with one or two life insure uh, with one or two insurance companies as opposed to a gazillion of them right i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere don't go anywhere, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to the Sweetie Kiwi Show, the world's largest infotainment show. I'm very happy to have you today. <laughs> I hope you are doing fantastic and you are enjoying the content so far. We want to talk now about homeowners or renters insurance. Now, just to kind of quickly tell you what we've been talking about, we just finished talking about pet insurance, right? We have talked about flood insurance earlier, life insurance, disability insurance, dental insurance and of course health insurance now homeowners or renters insurance before i even get into that i just want to quickly again we love giving our shout outs to uh, you know to our um, our beloved listeners and viewers and fans throughout the world so today we want to give a shout out to ellis dorsey she is in pleasant field that's washington state jaylene roman she is in Bellevue, Washington. And Toby Osborne, he is in Bellingham, Washington State. So, Toby Osborne, Jalen Roman, Alice Dorsey, we love you all the way to all the way to Washington State. Now, homeowners, homeowners insurance or renters insurance now. If you own a home, if you own a property, you need homeowners insurance. Now, if you need a, if you rent your place, obviously you need renters insurance right so you need this insurance unless you can afford to pay out out of pocket to replace everything you own this is the idea so if you have enough money and you don't care about you know the things you own or you are comfortable replacing them yourself 
through your own monetary means when something happens if there is fire fire in the in the house then you're fine so you also need need home insurance or renter's insurance to shield you from liability in case someone gets hurt on your property this is very key so homeowners and renters insurance policies contain two very different c components so listen up folks this is very important this is a biggie liability coverage and property coverage now let me explain what this means now liability coverage pays for expenses associated with an injury on your property so for instance if someone slips and falls on your steps right you're having a party you're having a little party at home people are just relaxing chilling and something happens somebody inadvertently slips and falls on your steps your liability policy will pay for your defense if they sue you that policy will also pay for any damages the injured person is awarded so liability coverage also pays out if your dog for instance if your dog bites someone and you're sued so it kind of helps you it kind of covers you kind of covers your back for any type of liability when you're sued when something happens that you're not responsible for right now that's for liability uh, coverage you also have something called property coverage now property coverage pays if something happens to your home or your possessions within it so you have your your, your equipment your clothes your your computer your uh, anything any possessions that you have that was in the house will be covered so if your house burns down or your roof is destroyed by a hailstorm for instance you know or someone comes and uh, you know you're a victim of, uh, of of vandalism and somebody comes and steals your belongings your insurance will pay you so the thing is that you know typically this type of insurance this is the property coverage also covers you and also you know protects you if you're robbed outside of your home so you know if let's say you are in the bus or you go to the to the local uh, local cafe and something happens and somebody steals your laptop the insurance will cover it all right so the thing is that when it comes to the uh, the payments the amount that the, the, the insurers insurance companies pays you there is something called market value or replacement value right so you can get market value property coverage or replacement value property coverage so market value will pay what your home or possessions are worth on the market so if your couch you know let's say if your if your furniture for instance is say five years old your insurer will will pay only a small amount for the furniture because it's not worth much again depending on the type of uh, the type of furniture you have so even though you probably wouldn't actually be able to buy a new furniture a you know, new furniture with the money the insurer gives you right now you know on the other uh, other hand if you get replacement value coverage the insurance pays to replace the possessions you lost or pays the cost to rebuild your home this is very important now remember that this is for i was talking about this this is for home homeowners insurance now you'll need to choose how much liability protection and property coverage you want to buy right this is like any kind of uh, any type of insurance right you need to set the limits of liability protection you want to get so the more coverage you have the higher the premiums which makes sense right because should something happen the insurance company will have to pay the maximum of coverage so this is very important so you need to choose your deductible right so generally for insurance as you know a lower deductible means higher premiums while a higher deductible means you pay more out of pocket if something happens right but your regular premiums are still lower now when it comes to homeowners or renters insurance most policies also have s s some caps on how much they'll pay for lost possessions right so for example the um how do you say it your insurance policy may say listen i'll we'll just only pay you five thousand in jewelry we'll cover up up to five thousand in jewelry right but let's say you have a fifty thousand fifty thousand dollars engagement ring i wish i could have that <laughs> <laughs> or I wish I could give that to someone. <laughs> but imagine that you have a fifty thousand engagement ring. You would need an add-on coverage 
to make sure you are fully covered, right? Now, in insurance parlance, that add-on coverage is called a rider. So the rider is uh, something that you know helps you increase the coverage limit that the insurance company has you know has been comfortable allowing you. So in this case, if the insur insurance company said, "Listen, we are only covering five thousand, and your engagement ring is worth." 50,000 you'd have to buy coverage for you, you you need to buy an extra coverage in other words a rider for $45,000 all right now how do you get homeowners insurance or renters insurance cheaply the, the process is is analogous to what I said before right you want to make sure that you get it from the same company uh, with home with you know same company with which you are already in business and, and you know you want to also think about how to uh, protect yourself more from theft from you know risk of fire or anything that could lead to a covered incident right because nobody wants to really get into you know even though you're paying for insurance you don't want to cause the you know the covered uh, event the covered incident right as a matter of fact there is a law that you know, you know that aggressively punishes those who are found guilty of doing that. You know, like in the news, you could probably hear from time to time that somebody will actually, you know, uh, cause their house to burn so they can collect the uh, the insurance benefits. That's just crazy, right? And if you're caught doing that, you're going to jail, and you're going to jail for a long time. So this is just a big no-no. All right. I'll be right back right after this, right after this, right after this. Don't go anywhere. Do not go anywhere. All right. Welcome back, folks, to uh, the Sweetie Kiwi Show, the world's largest infotainment show. If you just join us right now and uh, or you've been listening to us for a while and you just appreciate it, we just appreciate the content we've been dropping. Please subscribe to our channel subscribe and we'll love you back 1000 1000 times hit the subscribe button and smash the notification bell so that you are notified whenever we drop a new jewel like the one we, we are saying we are sharing with you today now we typically release new content every day or twice every you know twice a day depending upon our our inspiration whether we are lazy or not or whether we have the resources <laughs> so also like this content if you think it is adding value to you share it if you believe that somebody somewhere needs to have more info about insurance and comment below comment tell us what you think about insurance in general but also you can give us your your insights on specific types of insurance whether you, whether you had situation where you had to deal with insurance in the past or are currently dealing with insurance insurance problems let the whole community know so we can learn one thing also that I would uh, I would ask you to do if you can would really appreciate that please watch the sh watch the ads that we are inserting that you know they are inserted inserted in, in the show because we need resources to to expand our production team we need resources to finance the trips the investigations the reports everything we have to do to continue providing a free you know high quality Con, uh, high quality program to our millions of viewers in the whole world so thank you very much now I just want to quickly give you the framework of today's show so you fully understand what we're talking about here so in, to in today's show I'm giving you a free manual on all kinds of insurance I'm telling you what you absolutely need why you really need it and how to quickly get it cheaply depending on your situation understanding insurance can be tricky so you must have a clear knowledge of what you need as well as the corresponding coverage. This can make a major difference in the price you ultimately pay. When you have something to lose and you know that you could not afford to cover a potential loss yourself, insurance will step in, giving you the necessary means to protect your investment, lifestyle, assets, and personal property. You pay a small amount of money every month in exchange for the insurance for the assurance rather the assurance that if something goes wrong your insurer will have your back in the form of monetary compensation let's get into the nitty-gritty right now 
and we are talking about now we're talking about car insurance right so everybody's aware you know, everybody understand car insurance uh, but in, in this in this show I'm just gonna focus on what it really is what it covers and why you really need it right now as I said before most people are familiar with car insurance because you are required by law to have it in order to drive right so the thing is that if you happen to if you don't have no insurance or you register a vehicle without insurance this could lead to criminal charges so it's totally this is a big no no never do that now uh, depending on your state's rules you might have you might be required to buy a different type of insurance because each state sets its own rules for what car insurance you are required to have you know typically you need a liability insurance policy because this covers this pays out if you injure someone or damage someone else's property right so if you cause an accident your liability insurance will pay for the expenses of defending you defending you against the lawsuit and it also pays out compensation as part of a settlement or awarded damages in a lawsuit so so this is very important now remember that a liability policy a liability policy does not pay you for losses you incur when you when you damage your own vehicle they only this policy only pays for losses you cause others to incur right so in in a lot of states i think it's it's between uh, 15 or 20 states you are also required to buy something called personal injury protection pip now these states are called no fault states so what happens there is that if you get into an accident while driving in any of, in one of these states you don't file a claim with the other driver's insurance for compensation for minor injuries right so rather you your own insurance pays if you get hurt unless the injury was catastrophic so this is you know this is what pip stands for here so your pip coverage pays for your own injury or loss of wages up to a certain limit right regardless of who was responsible for the accident now other states also require you to buy something called uninsured or underinsured motorist coverage now uninsured uh, uninsured motorist coverage as the name implies pays for losses that an uninsured driver causes that would have been covered by their insurance if they had it that's for uninsured right now underinsured coverage pays for uncompensated losses caused by someone with no with, with too little insurance this is very important folks to really understand the, the difference so you know the difference between uninsured and underinsured now if your state does not require uninsured or underinsured underinsured motorist coverage you can still choose to buy it right and in you know in all uh, in all honesty i think you should buy it because getting into an accident with an uninsured driver could lead to thousands of dollars in uncovered losses so the idea behind insurance in general is to cover your back right you want to cover any incidents any negative events any detrimental event that could affect your life so you know now in addition to all this kind of uh, insurance so for instance liability insurance personal injury protection uninsured and or underinsured motorist coverage you can still buy something called additional coverage for instance you can purchase comprehensive coverage to pay for repairs or replacement of your vehicle if you cause an accident you know or god forbid a tree falls on your car you know your car is stolen or, or something just happens to it you know things happen right so you can you know if you have additional coverage it will cover that so if you have a car loan for, you know if you have a car loan most of the time the the lender will require you to get comprehensive coverage right and if you buy uh if you buy uh, rental car coverage y you know your your insurer will pay for a rental car if your vehicle is damaged in an accident and you need to wait for repairs okay so this is very important so just make sure check with your state authority 
go to your DMV and ask for you know ask for for specific info because you need to to have at least the minimum auto insurance required by your state right and in all honesty you should also have you should also thinking about purchasing comprehensive coverage unless your car is very cheap and you could easily replace it right because the amount of coverage you have along with your deductible determines your premiums right because the insurer will look at the the deductible you have chosen along with the coverage you want to have right so and other things that the uh the insurance companies will take a look at before you know setting your um, your premiums include things like you know your, your marital status your driving record your gender your age you know young people are considered more like like riskier than uh, older uh, individuals and um the thing is that just in general the insurance company will look into all other risk factors just again again just to determine whether or not you are a risk you know onboarding for them we've had uh, we have another show out there that you should also check it talks about sr22 car insurance you know for those uh, people who have had their license revoked or suspended you know there are other uh, there are additional conditions that they have to to fulfill to you know w- when they're thinking about buying um, uh, buying car insurance now one thing very trivial here and this is very crazy but i, I just have to say it did you know that the color of the car also you know the color the color and make of your car can affect premium cost so you know if you have for instance you know of course and that, and that makes sense right if you have a very expensive car and you live in a very uh, sort of dodgy neighborhood it will certainly go up right or if you have this sort of flashy flashy colors you know you know you have red those sort of colors that attract people or the the human eyes <laughs> chances are you are going to you know increase your uh, your premiums so the thing is that when it comes to getting car insurance if you want to get it cheaply again the the advice here is uh is uh, analogous to what i said earlier shop around right go online use uh um comparison apps applications on uh, on smartphones on on uh, ios or android you know ask for uh, referrals talk and most importantly talk to your existing insurer talk to your existing uh, your existing provider right see if they see if they can work some they can work out something with you and give you a cheap and a, you know an affordable uh, cheap and affordable uh, insurance policy all right i will be right back right after this welcome back folks we are still talking about insurance here this is a very important topic and uh, i'm just having uh, you know i'm just having fun i love talking about finance personal finance and insurance and risk medication those are very great topics because they allow people to move forward in life and avoid certain costly mistakes right now before i go a little deeper i just want to i just want to give a quick shout out to denzel gentry in clover virginia madeline bradshaw in arlington virginia and joe fry in blacksburg virginia denzel gentry Madeline Bradshaw and Joe Fry. Thank you so much all the way from Virginia. We appreciate your uh, your your support, your feedback, your interest in the Sweetie Kiwi show. This is fantastic. Without you, this show would not be where it is. Without the millions of viewers and listeners and uh, fans all over the world, we would not have we would not be the world's largest infotainment show. So we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now, what is umbrella insurance? Now you can decide to buy this type of insurance again if you have the cash and, and if uh, you really need it if you believe your your personal situation uh, warrants this kind of a, uh, this kind of insurance now an umbrella policy provides coverage above and beyond the liability protections provided by all other insurance policies so think of it as the grandmaster of all insurance policies that you currently have so you know remember every individual insurance policy has caps right caps in terms of their maximum amount of money that the insurer will want to pay so let's say that you're not comfortable with uh, 
with the current insurance or the, with the current insurance policy limits that you have, you can say, okay, I'm going to keep what I currently have, but I'm going to buy umbrella insurance to cover the, 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 the limits to, to, to cover anything above and beyond the limits, right? So let's say for instance that you're, you have a, you know, homeowners or auto or car policy and this policy only you only have you know a quarter of a million in uh, in coverage and you are sued for one million the umbrella policy will pay the outstanding liabilities in this case seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars so it is important it is very very critical to have umbrella insurance to protect your assets and to protect you from having your wages garnished if you are successfully sued let me repeat that this is so important folks you must have umbrella insurance to protect your asset and to protect you from you having your wages garnished if you are successfully su successfully sued now buying an umbrella policy can be way more way way more affordable than significantly increasing coverage limits on your homeowners and auto insurance right now just make sure that you read you read the fine prints because your insurer will likely require you to maintain at least a set minimum amount of liability coverage on the other policies right so the umbrella insurer will make sure that will, 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 will require you to take care of the other coverage policies the other policies <laughs> other coverage policies who says that other coverage policies <laughs> so your umbrella insurer will make sure that you maintain a certain amount of liability coverage on the other policies right and remember that another catch here is that the umbrella insurance only kicks in once those policies have those earlier policies have paid out up to policy limits so you know think it's more like you know the the car the policy of last resorts or you know your you know if all else fails policy right so if you're someone who will sleep better at night knowing you're protected all the way then umbrella umbrella insurance is for you now if you cannot afford it you know if you can afford it of course if you can afford it without breaking your bank right this is very important so what does umbrella insurance cover really it covers everything you can think about it covers injuries damage to properties some lawsuits personal liability situations and so on and so forth now let me just dig a little deeper because this is an important uh, an important topic let me just detail a little bit so bodily injury liability covers the cost of damages to another person's body right so examples include the cost of medical bills and or liability claims due to injuries caused by you know a guest in your home fail in a falls not fails falls if a guest in your in your heart in your home falls or the neighbor's child falls while playing in your in your yard right harm caused to others by your dog or a serious auto accident where you are at fault so property damage liability covers the cost of damage or loss to another person's tangible property so example include the cost associated with damage to vehicle and other property due to an auto accident where you are at fault right so remember that if you are also an owner of a rental units so owners of rental units to help protect against liability that you may face as a landlord for example you know the cost of liability claims due to someone tripping over a crack in the sidewalk of your rental property and the person is suing you for damages or let's say your tenant's dog you know bites someone and you are being held responsible for the injuries this is very important now other things uh, other scenarios where umbrella insurance will be very perfect is coverage is for instance slender right so an injurious spoken statement somebody just you know just um just you know like insulting you right or libel so you have an injurious written statement so slander and libel are mean the same thing the only difference is that slander means the person said it and libel means the person wrote it all right so you are also coverage is also provided if you are sued for false arrest detention or an imprisonment imprisonment 
malicious prosecution, shock, or mental anguish. So this is really uh, the in detail and childish detail, <laughs> I like to say, the the types of coverage that are that are allowed or there that you know a an umbrella policy affords. Now, how do you, how do you get it cheaply? The process is it's the same. Go to the you want to go to the um, an insurance company that you currently have business with. In some cases, you can even get an umbrella insurance with the same company with which you already have an existing an existing uh, policy. So go for it. All right. I will be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back, folks, to uh, the Sweetie Kiwi Show, the world's biggest infotainment show. We are very happy to have you here. We are talking today about uh, all kinds of insurance, you know. And if you just, uh, if you've been listening to the show so far, please consider subscribing to our channel. Turn on the la- the, the the bell, like it, share the show, comment below, give us your experience about about life insurance, health insurance, all kinds of insurance. We are all, always interested in hearing about insurance. One thing I want to say is that it, I just want to quickly give, you know, give the framework of what we are talking about today and what, what this show is about. Now, in, t- in today's show, I am giving you a free manual all, on all kinds of insurance, what you absolutely need, why you really need it, and how to quickly get it cheaply, depending on your situation. Understanding insurance can be, cr- can be tricky, so you must have a clear knowledge of what you need as well as the corresponding coverage, this can make a critical difference in the price you ultimately pay. When you have something to lose and you know that you could not afford to cover a potential loss yourself, insurance will step in, giving you the necessary means to protect your investment, life, your investment lifestyle, assets, and personal, pro- personal property. You pay a small amount of money every month in exchange for the assurance that if something goes wrong, your insurer will have to will have your back in the form of monetary compensation. Let's get into the nitty gritty and sort of wrap up this show. Now, now I want to give you a very important 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 list of things you have to think about when when it comes to insurance. There are a few things you have to consider in general. Now, number one, your credit score and history. Yeah, I know. A lot of people think that, you know, to, to when it comes to insurance, dis, you know, discussions around insurance policy and coverage, credit score is not really, you know, is not really a factor because credit score is more for something that has to do with debts, right? And I would say wrong, because remember, an insurance company is is categorized as a financial institution. They have to manage money. They have to manage risk. They have to grow their, their. They have to grow their own bottom line. They have to make money. They have to earn something. They have to earn money on money, right? So they are very insurance companies are very adamant at, at making sure that they can control and manage the risk that they are taking. So if you have a bad credit score, if you have a low credit score or very, I would say, disrep- disreputable credit history, you will be considered as a high risk for the insurance company. And they will, you know, bump up the premiums as a consequence, right? So make sure that when it comes, you know, as, as you are thinking in general about your financial situation and you're trying to polish your credit score and history, remember that your insurance will come to your, your insurance, your premium payments or your premium amounts will consider to suffer as long as you have bad credits. All right. Now, the second thing you need to consider is your financial situation this is another one because we are talking about not only premium payments we are also we are also talking about um deductible right if something happens and you have to you know the insurance companies insurance company will only step in after you do your part so they they are they are going to sit around and wait for you to do your part Pay the pay the deduct the deductible before they step in. So, would you be able to afford, you know, the deductible if something happens? Because without you paying the, the deductible, they're not paying, or they might pay, but they'll pay 
the uh, the loss amount minus the deductible all right so another thing to consider was what that's very important when it comes to financial situation is you want to have you know absolutely you want to absolutely have a savings account at least one you want to have a savings account either a normal savings account or you want to have a savings account plus a rainy day slash emergency fund this is critical folks because we live, we live in this life and this life sometimes can be very crazy anything can happen anything can happen so you know before you uh you think about the insurance company helping you please help yourself and insure yourself and the best way to insure yourself is through savings okay the third thing you want to consider is your life situation before you get into insurance you want to understand your current life situation are you married are you single are you a single mom or a single dad or are you uh, in is in a you know in a civil relationship and you know are you living with someone you're not married you are in a relationship those things are very important because it might affect what kind of coverage you have all right your your area where you live your neighborhood is also very important right you know any kind of uh, any kind of insurance policy you know in the uh, in the vetting process in the verification process they'll take this thing into account especially for things like flood insurance or homeowners or renter renters insurance or car insurance where you live has a significant it plays a significant part in the uh, in the premium that you're paying or whether or not your application for a policy your application for uh, coverage is approved at all another thing you want to think about is um, whether or not you are in a professional organization if you are a member of a professional organization this is very important because this could help you save a lot of money because um, these organizations this asso these associations have um, have discounts for their members so this could really help you you can get car insurance through the organization through your membership you can get you know homeowners insurance you can get all kinds of discount all kinds of rebates so consider having that if you currently if you currently have no affiliation with any professional association consider having one at least one another thing is that you want to shop around when it comes to insurance always shop around you you will be surprised you will be crazily surprised you will be insanely surprised to see the price differences in the same area so use online tools you know you have uh, those uh, those aggregators those review sites right that that basically a review you know they have the top 10 the top 20 the top 30 sort of uh, you know insurance companies go for those based on the type of insurance you're trying to get right another thing you want to also use is uh, apps so applications on your phone make sure you use them just to uh, there are a lot of apps out there that that allow you to compare insurance policies i mean insurance companies before you, you even contact them read the reviews read the reviews on the insurance company also you want you might want to contact the the triple b so the better business bureau to know more about the insurance company you're trying to do business with and also use word of mouth right so referrals are also are also highly encouraged so you know exactly that you are getting great advice from someone you're close you're close to and if possible right buy, buy all insurance with the same company all insurance and you'll be surprised but there are you know in america you have a few companies that offer everything you know a few companies that a few insurance companies they are big enough they are big enough to cover all kinds of risk so just get everything from the same company if at all possible all right i will speak to you right after this Welcome back, folks, to uh, the Sweetie Key. We show the world's most popular show. We are talking today about uh, insurance. I did talk to you about several several kinds of insurance, and I just finished talking to you about uh, the things you have to consider in general when when thinking about buying life insurance, uh, buying not life insurance, when buying insurance in general, right? And uh, I want to quickly give another shout out to uh, three, uh, three folks who have been supporting us in the last several years. We have Xavier Flores in Waterbury, Vermont. 
Sydney O'Neill in Burlington, Vermont, and Misael Rogers in Rutland, Vermont. Thank you so much, Misael, Sydney, and Xavier for your support, your, your, your tips, your feedback. We really appreciate it. Now, just want to quickly recap what we talked about today. So in this, in this uh, insurance guide, insurance tutorial, I spoke to you about health insurance and then dental insurance, disability insurance, life insurance, flood insurance, pet insurance, homeowners insurance or renters insurance, car insurance, and umbrella insurance. And as a bonus, I gave you a few ideas few ideas about things you need to consider in general before buying buying a policy right now let, let's just talk about today's call to action now folks this is very important today's call to action because you know information is power right but one thing we at Sui Kiwi believe deeply in is that information without action is really lethargy right so you want to you want to act now because action is more like it's more like omnipotence really if you think about it action things happen when there is action all right so today i want you to do this shop smart and find adequate coverage for you and your loved ones including your pets if you do have them. look for discounts fill the gaps in your insurance coverage fill fill in the gaps in your insurance coverage purchase life insurance even if you think you're too young talk to an independent agent so those are the five the five actions i invite you to do today let me repeat them shop smart and find adequate coverage for you and your loved ones including your dogs or your pets in general right look for discounts fill in the gaps in your insurance coverage purchase life insurance even if you think you're too young talk to an independent agent this is it folks for today's show and uh i have a pro tip for you and this is today's pro tip now oh well we'll be right back right after this <laughs> all right here's today's pro tip call your insurer everywhere to renegotiate your premium amount so you want to call your insurer anytime to renegotiate your premium amount. Tell your insurer that you've got a lower offer with two or three competitors. Ask them what best offer they've got. And the reason why you're doing this, you want to know whether or not you are overpaying or you are paying the right price. You, you got it. Thank you. Stay marvelous. And I'll speak to you next. <laughs>